Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm Andy Murray from What Culture. And coming up today, we are going to talk about the ridiculous gimmick that WWE rejected for Big E. We're going to ask the question, are WWE deliberately editing footage to stop people getting over? And we're also going to talk about the two major WWE stars who are attracting big time interest from Hollywood. Plus the reason why AEW will never have an authority figure and Zack Ryder opens up about his internet championship and WWE banning it. This is the news. Let's kick things off by talking about this gimmick. Man, this is absurd, right? So Big E was on the bump recently. The bump. I didn't know that was a thing until about a month ago, but the bump. He was on the goddamn bump. Anyway, he was talking about a gimmick that he wanted to bring to FCW when he first signed with uh, WWE. Now, you might look at a guy like Big E and go, I don't know, like a weightlifter or something, a professional protein consumer, something like that. But no, the gimmick he wanted to bring to FCW and WWE in general was that of a mailman. He wanted to be Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. That was the theme song, right? Yeah. He wanted to be that in FCW. Here's a quote. I got to FCW and they said, no, this is not a good idea. Uh, but my name was going to be Mel, last name Man. Just let that marinate for a second. Okay, let's continue. And I was going to come out with these short, like, old school postal service shorts that were tight. You know what I mean? I had my mailbag. So... B Biggie wanted to be Melman, the mailman, which is only slightly less ridiculous than the guy who really loves pancakes being your whole entire character, I guess. But he's made that work, so maybe he'd have made the postman gimmick work as well, you know. There's all kinds of cool things you could have done with this. Could have had a cool catchphrase, he wins a match, he goes, well, you know what they say, the postman always delivers. Something like that. He could have been like a modern era version of Just Joe going around delivering these little nuggets of information, stirring the pot. I'm probably bigging this up way too much. It would have been WrestleCraft, wouldn't it? Well, I don't know. I'm kind of inclined to agree with you here. I, I, partially because I think it's Big E, so I think he can probably get anything over because we all just sort of adore him. Uh, I remember this being mentioned in passing in that FCW documentary that WWE did. And I, yeah, at the time went, excuse me, what? Mel Man? Okay. But then, and then again, this might relate to the fact that we just love Big E. I kind of miss wrestlers with other job you know as a gimmick you know yeah your, your irs your, your repo man you, people like that i feel like that might be make that could make a comeback this year because they've exhausted exhausted every other avenue and yeah like you say he could have made it work he could he could suddenly start hulking up and no selling and the rep commentators could go oh my god he's going postal like <gasps> Think it would work. He could Think make it all. work. Yeah, I would like to see him give it a go. Maybe, why didn't he do this in Southpaw Regional Wrestling when that was a thing? That's oh. my question. That would have been fun. God, I miss Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Yeah, but let us know uh, what you think of this gimmick in the comments section below and any other job gimmicks that you'd like to give to current wrestlers and we'll give a mention on tomorrow's news because I really think this could run and run. Uh, oh, right, yeah. let's move on and talk about AEW and many people have been questioning whether or not AEW is going to or should even have an authority figure and uh, well Cody has responded to all this explaining why yeah that's not going to happen. He was answering questions on Twitter over the weekend uh, and someone asked him when is there going to be an authority figure for AEW Dynamite? Uh, Lenar a Hall asked that question and Cody responded, hopefully never. The audience isn't dumb, they know who management is. Authority elements seem insulting in this era. This is just my opinion as there's a lot of fun ways to do it and I respect those. So just curtailing it from being a shoot with that final sentence there but it looks like we won't see any authority figures in AEW which will be I suppose, a nice change from the norm Andy. Yeah, good. Good. I never want to see an authority figure in professional wrestling ever again, to be quite honest with you. Um, I hate them. I don't think there's any use for them. They're a relatively modern invention in that they've only come around in the past two to three decades. And, like, you know, a lot of people have come through, a lot of younger wrestling fans who only know wrestling with authority figures just, you know, you learn to think that this is the norm and this has always been the case, but it hasn't, man. Like, 
this was never really a thing until like modern companies started batting heads against each other several decades ago in the 90s and so forth so I'm with Cody you don't need them they're they're completely without use in in the modern era um William Regal does a good job on NXT not taking that away whatsoever but NXT really doesn't need the guy um I think it is nice to see him on TV because William Regal is one of my favorite guys ever doesn't need him at all. Uh, I'm totally with Cody. We've seen Tony Khan show up on AEW a couple of times. They did that weird invisible camera segment where yeah. John Moxley was in the office and there was stuff happening. And then we've seen him like addressing Nyla Rose when she won the women's title and stuff. But that's enough. That's enough for me. I don't want to see any more. Yeah, I think occasionally if you really need someone to lay down the law, you can have some sort of off-screen authority figure, you know, like the good old days. But... Yeah, WWE have really got all the juice out of this, so I don't see it happening anytime soon in AEW. Yeah, exactly. And a little bit of credit to WWE as well. When was the last main roster authority figure we saw? Haven't seen one in, what, like a year and a half? Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good stuff. Um, not so good stuff. Let's talk about uh, some Twitter things. Uh, so Dolph Ziggler tweeted over the weekend. He said, Anybody know how to find a clip of myself and Sonya from backstage on SmackDown? They conveniently posted the Otis and Mandy one, but not ours with that e emoji with the rocks eyebrow thing. Carl uh, Anderson quote tweeted this straight away, uh, saying, They'll conveniently leave out lots of things that'll get you more over. Fun stuff, right? Fun stuff. Let's not take this too seriously, you comment people. Um, it seems very much like Carl Anderson's just having a bit of fun here. And it does feed into a long-held theory that if you do something that might get over against what's going on on TV, what's been planned in a meeting room, uh, they might not necessarily support that. Carl Anderson's a spicy guy. He likes screwing around on social media. I'm interested to see what his next move is. Do we think WWE edit out things that make people get less over? I, I think, think they do. I think they, I think they have an idea in their mind of who yeah. they want to be pushed and when. And I think if you not not really defy that, but if suddenly you sort of break out of your mold and really showcase yourself, at least initially, they're going to be like, whoa, 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 we didn't have this plan, so they won't go with it. It will until you get a real ground swell of support behind you, and even then. You know, it might take something major to happen for them to notice that. But yeah, yeah I saw that backstage segment with uh, Dolph and, and uh, Sonya. I think Sonya's been an absolute sensation great. in the yeah. last couple of weeks. And I like Dolph in this, and I got really invested in the main event between him and, and Otis. But surely, how long has been Dolph been with the WWE? Surely he must know some sort of streaming service he can just clip something off of. You know, I can do that. Yeah, man, he's, uh, he's been a little rascal himself there, isn't he? As he's prone to doing. As he's prone to doing. Uh, but speaking of guys trying to get themselves more over, yeah, we'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Zack Ryder. Of course, uh, unfortunately, we were one of those people uh, released uh, on the uh, Black Wednesday. An awful day for, for wrestlers. Uh, and he was talking on Instagram Live about his internet title. We all remember from all those years ago when he was first really breaking out and getting himself over, as we mentioned, which WWE hated. So they put him in a comedy neck brace and a wheelchair and I'd Kane push him off the stage. Uh, but anyway, talking about that internet title, he when he was asked uh, why he wasn't allowed to wear that belt on television, you know, the one with the YouTube and all the social media stuff on it, before, th this was before tout, let's just say that. Uh, he uh, said he was told he was a, quote, mark for himself. Uh, despite the fact he wanted it just make it, you know, he didn't want to make it some sort of real accolade. It was just sort of a cool accessory akin to the million dollar championship. All the promotion we're willing to do was produce a little thing for his action figure with the, the strap as an accessory. Uh, and talking about it, he said, I think there was some money lost, a lot of money lost, especially at that time. I almost guarantee, Andy, the reason, you know, why he wasn't allowed this is because this wasn't their idea and they didn't like yeah. it and they, they thought it was a bit pathetic to have made your own championship even though that's what almost every wrestling fan does growing up at some point in their life considering how much they love merch nowadays i feel like if this gimmick came along now they'd be all over it they'd be selling replicas replicas for six grand on wwe shop yeah i think zach Ryder is the guy you point to when you make like an argument like carl anderson and dolph ziggler's tweets there um He's probably the most spectacular case of a guy getting really organically over through his own work on YouTube with the internet title, with the series. And then WWE just going, nah, I'm going to push you off the stage with Kane, mate. Sorry, uh, John Cena's going to steal your girlfriend. It's going to be great, but you're not going to be popular anymore. Um, I feel 
like, Zack Ryder is such a creative guy with utilizing these forms of media and stuff, and he's going to be successful after WWE as a direct result of that. It's a shame that he never really enjoyed the level of success that his popularity at that time uh, really warranted. And I think he's right, man. Like, they could have sold that thing, like, you know, they sold the Fiend belt for, like, 20 grand or whatever. <laughs> like, they could have sold the internet title. They could have had little foam ones for the kids and stuff. It would have been fun. It would have made them some money. They, I think they left a fair bit of money on the table with Zack yeah. Ryder. And I think they'll regret that because now that he's uh, got the internet, or he's applying for the internet champion trademark, he's going to do some cool things outside of that company wherever he ends up. And so. it wasn't, you know, yes, it wasn't the, the prettiest looking belt. It had his fringe thing on it. It's a lot better than 24-7 Championship, let's be honest. It most certainly is. Speaking of things that are better looking than the 24-7 Championship, let's talk about Roman Reigns. Um, <laughs> so we've got a new report here from WrestlingNews.co's Paul Davis talking about the two WWE superstars that are attracting significant interest from both Hollywood and the TV industry. Let's talk about Roman Reigns first. Uh, it is said here that Hobbs and Shaw, his role in that film, opened a lot of doors from him, and there are interests from uh, producers who feel that he has the look of a star who will come off well on TV shows. The other wrestler mentioned in this article is Becky Lynch, uh, who has attracted interest from Hollywood in particular. Uh, Mr. Davis writes that at least two directors are interested in securing her for projects at the moment. This comes off her her appearance on last night's series premiere, season premiere, sorry, of Billions. Uh, she's also been linked with a Marvel pro project over the past couple of days. All kinds of interesting stuff here. Um, are they going to follow in the footsteps of people like The Rock? Are they going to carve out in Hollywood? I think it'd be interesting to see. I thought Roman Reigns was a lot of fun in Hobbs and Shaw, by the way. Like, I don't think he opened his mouth once, actually. But, you know, like, the fight scene with The Rock was cool. Hey, that, there's probably a role for him somewhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you know, I know we moan about it, but WWE we talk about those looks that will turn people's heads in the airport, and Roman Reigns is certainly that guy. And yeah, I really liked him in in Hodson Shore. I thought he did a, a great performance. And I, for one, because I didn't know I didn't know any spoilers about it, when he hit the spear during the fight, I popped big time. I shouted "spear" in the yeah. cinema. I was like, "spear, brilliant!" Um, so I can see that happening. And Becky Lynch, yeah, she's she's very talented. And, oh, this sounds terrible, but if I'm honest, if that means she has to take a few months away from WWE, I'd be fine with that. Freshen her character up a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. And then, plus, it, it all builds into the narrative of her getting carried away with her own success, a la yeah. Rocky Three, as we're always referencing. Uh, and then when she comes back to, to regain her championship from someone like a Shayna Baszler, it all just works so much more into the storyline. Hell yeah, I'm here for it. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. Don't forget you can tweet them to us at WhatCultureWWE. First question today comes from Cody Miller, who says, What if Carl and Luke stop by AEW for a bit, tell the fans they are just here till New Japan opens up, and in the meantime, they win the AEW Tag Team Championships and jump to New Japan, where they, are, where they are welcome back into the Bullet Club, and that is how the AEW New Japan relationship starts. I think that's a really good way to do it. I think, like... If you're looking for a jump off point, that's a little bit more compelling than just having, I don't know, Tetsuya Naito jump a barricade on, on Dynamite, which would be awesome in itself. But like it would feed totally into Anderson Gallo's personalities as Bullet Club members. Uh, yeah, I think it's a really good idea. We should point out well, that there are so many hurdles uh, that need to be let before this working relationship can become a thing. But I'd be here for that. It'd be cool to see. I don't know, SCU or someone, like or, or Omega and uh, Paige, who both have history in New Japan, yeah. going over to Japan to try and bring the belts back and so forth, and other people coming into it from there. Jay White gets involved as a Bullet Club member, comes over, has a match with Cody or something. Good idea. I yeah, like I it. Yeah, I really like it. Like, I think this is what, you know, we're all fine with what's going on with AEW right now, but I feel like... You know, you can have, have too much of a good thing, and I don't want to burn out all the storylines at once, but can you imagine having that going on with all the, the current situation being as it is with championships and Moxley, and there's just so much stuff happening right now, the inner circle, and then, in amongst all this, surprise, surprise, bitches, Marty Skrull shows up. Yeah. It's just, oh, there's so much potential there. I really like oh, yeah. that as an idea, especially as you said with with Paige and Omega's history in New Japan and Bullet Club and what have you. Uh, second question today comes from Path Sathawain, who says, do you think that turning heel to save characters is being used too much nowadays? I can't even remember the last time that I saw a major face turn. Um, hmm. 
this is a tough question because the obvious answer I think to me is yes, but also no, because they've become so often ineffective at pushing and presenting babyface characters and maintaining their popularity. You know, there are exceptions. Becky Lynch has had a really good run. Um, there are a couple of others, but for the most part, the heel turns are a consequence of flawed booking and an inability to keep these people over. So yeah, it's happening too often, but at the same time, it kind of has to happen because otherwise you end up with situations where people are just, you know, burned out husks of performers. Uh, you end up with situations like Roman Reigns before, you know, his health problems and stuff kick back in. Um, they've done right by guys like Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan by turning them back and forth when the popularity is tailed off a bit. But, you know, if they were better at booking babyfaces, it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, they're just dreadful at booking babyfaces and they don't really understand what makes a babyface in the modern age. Because I think, arguably, the best way to make a babyface in WWE right now is to turn someone heel. Yeah. Uh, let's not forget that the whole Becky Lynch thing started from WWE going, right, she's a heel right now, after like SummerSlam. And everyone's like, no, she's the hero in this story. And they sort of had to reverse engineer all that and figure it out on the fly. I think if they ever sat down and said, right, this guy, this guy right here, who is a heel right now, we're gonna turn him babyface and get all this groundswell of crowd support behind him. Wouldn't work in my opinion, because yeah. they, they rely on tired old tropes and they don't really understand how babyfaces should act. And you know, the fact that, you know, you can get your ass kicked and be pissed off about it and still be a good guy. Like you don't have to be like, ah, oh, shucks, you beat me. Uh, but next time I'm gonna dip your yeah. head in some goo. It's like, <laughs> and realize, you know, we can't F and Jeff like we used to, but for God's sake, come on. Yeah, yeah, they are absolutely right. Uh, final question today comes from Mark Smith, who says, fantasy booking time. What storyline has been dropped from wrestling because of the ongoing global situation? I'll go with Undisputed Era turning up to Raw to feud with Seth and his gaggle of bastards. Oh, mate. Um, ooh, I think one... Huh, it's a tough one. I think one that comes from a place of reality is probably the, the logical continuation of what was going on with Daniel Bryan and Sammy. Uh, because Sammy's not been on TV, you've had to bring in Baron Corbin, which is kind of awkward and weird and I don't like. Um, whereas before you had this thing where it was the three on two with Gulak and Brian against the heels and you could have done so many different little singles matches and you could have brought somebody in to, to Brian's side, like a Gable or someone, bolstered that faction a little bit. They've lost out on all kinds of cool possibilities. I'm not saying that Baron Corbin isn't a good TV performer, I'm just saying it's a lot less interesting than Sami Zayn. And it's just kind of come out of nowhere and it's boring and I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I think they're, they're holding back as well on any sort of surprise returns like the hacker or anything like that. I feel that that may, would, may have been blown off earlier than now, yeah. but with things being as they are, they just don't really want to do it yet. Although, watch this space. Um, Roman Reigns, obviously, just not getting mentioned yeah. whatsoever, um, which I, you know, I, I initially heard and thought, what, they'd ban the use of his name, that's a bit OTT, but it does kind of make sense in their weird little headspace because he, when he returns, it's not like they're going to be like, oh, God, yeah, well, you know, you've, you've, you've mentioned his, his absence time and time and time again. It might be six months till we see him back in WWE, and hopefully we'll have crowds back then, and he d should deservedly get a huge pop. Kevin Owens, for me, just anything Kevin Owens related, he did that, did that huge spot at WrestleMania, he beat Seth Rollins. It's kind of played into his favour because you sense that they would have probably just chucked him into some sort of WWE Championship match where Drew kind of has to retain. So him being a potential world, a world Heavyweight Championship, what year is it Adam? A uh, world title contender down the line, could work for me, yeah. could work. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, it won't, but, you know, it could. Uh, right, let's move on to today's and finally. And you might have seen this over the weekend, Andy Murray. I just wanted to show it to you. It was, of course, The Rock's birthday over the weekend. I enjoyed that a great deal, yeah. especially that, that classic song he did in Sacramento. I watched that on a loop about five times. Uh, but I discovered, as many people did over the weekend, about the relationship between The Rock and Kevin Owens. No real surprise there. They're obviously two wrestlers who've worked or still do work occasionally in the WWE. Um... But I've discovered that Kevin Owens sends The Rock bird feeders. The Rock responded to a, a happy birthday message from Kevin Owens. 
uh, where he said, I have some extra feeders here, I'll send them your way. <laughs> He's talking about Blue Jays and Cardinals getting a nice snack from the Rock's bird feeders. And the Rock responded, please don't. The last bird feeder you sent came with birds inside. Dead <laughs> birds. But we're friends. So F it, go ahead and send me some more feeders. Thanks for the birthday, love brother. And Kevin responded, those were plastic. I thought they'd go well with your decor. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on here, but I kind of love it, Andy. Wholesome. <laughs> Honestly, the, having a bird fit genuinely to get off topic here, uh, we're about to launch uh, What Culture Birds, just like to point out very soon. Um, having a bird feeder in my garden is one of the few things that's getting me through this. I'm, I'm there going, look, dear, tits in the garden. And hey. it, it pops me every time, let's be honest. So. Hey, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba Love it. Uh, right, let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comment <laughs> section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Uh, later on today, myself and the daddy was going to be doing Get the Table. And of course, live, 4 p.m., right here on YouTube, 4 p.m. BST. We will be previewing the Go Home Money in the Bank episode of Money of Monday Night Raw, even, uh, answering all of your questions and dealing with any breaking news. But as I said, let us know your thoughts on Twitter as well and any Twitter questions you've got at What Culture WWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy at. At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for. Highway contract route, a route of travel served by a postal contractor to carry mail over highways between designated points. Some HCRs include mail delivery to addresses along the line of travel, formerly called Star Route. And let it never be said that I don't do my research. Very good. You learn something new every day. Follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at WhatCultureW, as I said. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for watching, and we will see you soon.